Good evening ladies and gentlemen, I am the Sarcastic Barman and welcome to my channel. Now for as long as there have been vaccinations, there's been anti-vaxxers going back the whole history through, even including variolation. And I thought this week we'd have a bit of a change from the flatards and the stupid people. Well, we are going to be looking at stupid people. But we'd have more of a look at the history of anti-vaxxers and some of the stupid things they came out with then and show how the movement hasn't really changed. So on that note, let's roll the intro and get right into it, shall we? Now, before we look at vaccinations, we do have to look at its cousin, variolation, a word that I'm never going to get right in this entire goddamn episode, so I may as well give up trying to say it right now and say it however the goddamn hell I please. So, variolation was the practice of taking the blistery pop marks from people who are recovering, or basically recovered, from the disease you're trying to protect yourself against, either grinding them up and snorting them up your nose, lovely, or cutting your skin and putting it under the skin, thereby giving you some sort of inoculation against the virus itself. Now, this wasn't a perfect practice, and it did have a death rate of about 3%, but compared to, say, smallpox's 20-30% to 30 death rate, that's a, a lot better. I think I'd take the 3% if there was no vaccine. Now, an early partaker of variolation was Cotton Mathers, and for any history buffs might know, he played a part in the Salem Witch Trials. Now, one of his slaves happened to have the scar mark from variolation for smallpox, and Cotton Mathers, after inquiring about this and talking to others, found that most slaves who had these potch marks didn't get smallpox. This is when he took it on himself to vaccinate, well, variolate his children and his wife. It worked, his children and his wife were fine. whoop de doo He then got his house bombed and he was attacked for doing something that was possibly seen as ungodly. Yet he was a minister. This, this is the crazy stupidness we are going for here. Now, in the modern age, we can be forgiven for having some vaccine hesitation. We don't live in a world where we see pandemics as a regular occurrence, where we see hundreds and thousands dying each year. But Cotton Mathers lived in the late 1600s to the early 1700s, a time when thousands of Native Americans were dying each year, a time where when one sailor brought smallpox to Boston, over 800 people died and 5,000 people were infected. It, it boggles the mind that people back then were so against these things for political reasons, sanitary reasons, or even religious reasons, when one would think that God has given us the knowledge on how to do this, maybe we best take it forward. Unfortunately, these things never change, and we have the same arguments going forward nowadays. But first, let's have a look at Edward Jenner and the anti-vaccination leagues. Hmm... Now, on the 14th of May, 1796, Edward Jenner inoculated young James Phillips with cowpox in an effort to show that cowpox could protect you from smallpox. As time went on, tests were done, even variolation attempts were done on James Phelps to show that there was no reaction to smallpox. This was basically the first form of vaccination. Over the years, people like Benjamin Waterhouse, Dr. Jean de Caro, and even the Empress Dowager of Russia promoted and worked with vaccines to bring it to what we're more familiar with today which meant that more and more people got grumpy with them and started moaning about vaccinations. The I'd rather die brigade, as I'll start to call them. <laughs> Through 
Through the 1800s, vaccinations became more and more popular, with the King of Spain in 1803 sending a mission to vaccinate its southern colonies, and in 1805 Napoleon's own sister trying to force compulsory vaccinations on people, though she had no way to register who'd been vaccinated, who hadn't been vaccinated, or to even check at that point. It wasn't until 1852 that the UK government attempted compulsory vaccinations, passing bills through Parliament. This is for children for smallpox, and it didn't go down well, especially in a place called Leicester here in England. And Leicester was the spot of one of the strangest sets of no, I don't want to get vaccinated, but I'll stay in my houses that people have ever seen, with basically the town turning to isolation and notification rather than vaccination, which considering what is going on nowadays is quite goddamn funny. But isolation and notification couldn't protect everyone. And in a smallpox outbreak in the late 1880s, people did unfortunately die. Though the numbers were respectably low for an area that had low vaccination rates. It worked out to around 20 people per 10,000, which was respectable for the time. But if you look at London with its high population density, its squalor conditions even in the late 1800s, there were cases of only 5.5 per 10,000 population, showing that vaccinations do work. This did help restart the vaccination programme in Leicester, with more and more people getting vaccinated as the time went on. But this was definitely not the end of the anti-vax movement. <laughs> Now in a world where smallpox and polio are a thing of the past and measles outbreaks only occur in areas of high stupidity, you would think that anti-vax movements would be a thing of the past. Unfortunately, the science denial stupidity of these people keeps growing, it's pushed on by the joys of the internet that they can share their stupidity with each other, anti-vax movements are once again growing in popularity, and unfortunately they seem to continue doing so with spokespeople like Dr. Andrew Wakefield. Oh wait, I shouldn't call him a doctor anymore because he can't practice medicine in the UK because it turns out he had a big conflict of interest and accidentally published things that shouldn't be published and turned out to be a bit of a liar or people like this ask those that are giving it ask there being any deaths ask them what is in it ask them get their names you email them to me the medical revolutionaries at protonmail.com with a group of lawyers we are collating all that at the Nuremberg trials the doctors and nurses stood trial and they home. If you are a doctor or a nurse, now is the time to get off that bus. Get off it and stand with us, the people. All around the world, they are rising. Now this is Kate Shimonari. Shimonari? Yeah, that was close enough. Ex-nurse, which means she's probably fully vaccinated. Ex-BA air hostess, which means she's probably fully vaccinated. And ex, I'm going to inject you with Botox and give you skin peels. Anti-vaxxing lady. Which is just nuts in itself she's been very prominent in a lot of the protests down in london for anti-masks anti-vaccines asking for a debate on the topic of vaccinations and things like that and it's not just the covid vaccinations she has a problem with if i remember there'll be a card in this side uh, linking to one of my previous videos she did where she dressed up as nurse ratchet and then spelt ratchet wrong the the stupidity just grows and grows so, yes, these are the people we have to deal with nowadays. Now, Kate has been in the news recently for the comments that you just heard, though she has tried to come out and deny saying that's not what she meant and that the mainstream media are simply cutting out the bits to make her sound like the crazy person, wherein, really, I don't think she needs help sounding like the crazy person. She's also posted things like this and like this all over the internet on several different media platforms. She seems to be the sort of person who definitely loves that attention, but it's quite worrying when her followers post things like this. 
So thereafter, for action to be taken, no longer just words. Is this the start of violence slowly erupting? Her son seems to think so and thinks that she should be locked up. She should be prosecuted for what she's saying. He's confirmed that she has been fined for organising protests during lockdown. So what is it going to take for a person like this to actually stop? I don't think there's much we could actually do. She's so deep down the rabbit hole of conspiracy that her son confirms that even when things are pointed out that are shown that this doesn't add up, this doesn't work, she becomes irate. She has a go at him. She calls him the stupid person. It seems she has a blind faith level of indoctrination that could only be rivaled by a flat earther. It's worrying that people like this attract such big crowds. And she's calling for discussion and debate, though turns down chances to debate people. Conspiracy cats offer a chance to debate vaccines when they're first coming out, and COVID turned down point blank, not even a reply. She seems to be under this impression that science gives a toss about her opinion, when really it doesn't. Luciferian is apparently the enzyme in the vaccine that's going to kill us all. Yes, she's a religious nut job too, and as anyone knows, I don't have a problem with religious people. But if you're using religion as your idea that vaccines are bad because you're that deep down a rabbit hole, you have serious problems. She hangs about with self-proclaimed weapons expert Mark I Shot a Girl in the Face Steel, and they go on mad little tirades about 5G causing COVID, even though she's also claimed that COVID isn't real, and she's also claimed that vaccines are causing COVID. Anything you can sort of think of, she seems to have claimed it by now. She's fallen down that many rabbit holes, I'm surprised she hasn't wound up in Wonderland, with the Red Queen looking down at her going off with her head. It's, it's scary that people can get to this level of popularity. She's been banned from YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, any sort of mainstream social media she has gone from, which then just makes her a bigger draw for people on the, the fringe bit shoots and things like that, where she can spout her complete and utter conspiracy nonsense in little echo chambers where no one can answer back to her. And heaven forbid anyone does answer back to her. One of my most popular videos on here was one of the videos I did laughing my tits off that she got removed from Facebook and the comments and bitchiness I got off blind faith followers was absolutely unbelievable. Flat earthers don't have that kind of blind faith that she seems to command and it's quite disgustingly worrying at this point. I feel this video's got off from what I originally planned, which was we were going to talk about anti-vax movements, we were going to go through the history of them, and I seem to have brushed over some bits just to have this tirade at the Botox-inducing, skin-peeling, more than likely vaccinated through both her jobs that she had, possibly other things that I'm not sure if I'm supposed to mention that have been told about by people who know her better than I do. Because, yes, not only has a family come out on TV, but people who worked with her and know her have not really had anything nice to say about her. She's fallen down the rabbit hole, she's off the rails, and she really does need looking at, locking up, and possibly facing charges. She calls for charges on doctors admitting vaccines, saying, They are going to kill them all! Well, we've got to the point now where most people have had the vaccination, or at least had the opportunity to have the vaccination. And unfortunately, the case numbers from hospitals show us that the majority of people in there are unvaccinated. Should anyone who's ended up in hospital have watched her video, should she be held responsible for them then refusing the vaccination? We've had people on deathbeds, especially in America, going, oh, it's not supposed to be that bad, which I feel sorry for them so, so much that they've been taken in by nutjob con artists like this. Because anyone who's going to inject Botox in your face but then complain about a vaccine has to be a con artist. There's no way she can think that's a reasonable sort of thing to do. Now, I'm going to end this video here, and I may come back to it at a later point and do what I actually intended to do. It'll depend on what the comments are down below. But thank you very much for watching this slightly... How shall I put it? 
Slightly personal, let's have a go at someone while covering some bits and bobs and being slightly more intelligent than normal sort of video. It's so much more difficult to do videos like this than rather just laughing at flirts, but it is very, very enjoyable, I will say that. Um, thank you very much to all my members, Patreons, everyone who makes these videos possible. Uh, this video should be out nice and early for all my members and Patreons to watch. Um, if you do enjoy these comments, videos, please leave me a comment, leave me a like. It's very much appreciated. Let me know what else you'd like to see. Uh, Thursday nights are going to be... A night I can do anything with at the moment. We're going to shift all the flat earth stuff over to nut job Tuesdays for the next few weeks while see you next Tuesday isn't on. So leave suggestions down below. Anything but flat earth, anti-vaxxers, hollow earth, mud flood. Maybe even I'll make a poll if people just put, put poll in the comments. We'll do that. Um, apart from that, thank you very much. Good night.